Hi, this is Steve Garland, head wrestling coach at the University of Virginia. Given my weekly video newsletter, Virginia Wrestling Video Newsletter, and this week um, I wanted to focus on our competition. I wanted to run through the highlights of our competition at the Clarion Open that we participated in this past weekend. And I want to do it in, the, in this way. For A, for, for time purposes, I want to streamline this. And I also want to focus on the positives and not discuss the negatives. Any action items or attack areas in our program, they'll be covered in the wrestling room. So and we plan on we're doing it right now as we speak, and then we'll be doing it again at 345 and throughout the rest of the week. So I'll stick to the highlights of the weekend. Um, first thing I'll say is this. Overall, corporately, what we saw was total buy-in to what we've been preaching since August when we, when we started doing our, uh, when we did our first, first official meeting with the team. It's just been incredible in terms of what the guys are taking in and then executing out on the mat. And the way they're competing was phenomenal. The fight was phenomenal. The effort was amazing. We were winning tons of close matches. We were the ones that were taking the majority of the shots. We were the aggressor in most occasions, more times than not. We were the guys that were uh, finding ways to win deep in, deep in, um, in matches where we were, as a matter of fact, coming from behind. You'll hear me talk about Louis Hayes in particular and Will Shaney, guys who came from behind and found ways to win, keeping composure. We saw a lot of great things there. We saw guys like Jake Keating um, dropping 16 points and double overtimes and doing everything you possibly can to, to win. And uh, that's just so encouraging as a coach. What we talk about our, our, with our guys is, is process. What we talk about is, is what we call being in the wheelbarrow, everybody in and, and buying into what we're talking about day in and day out. That's what we saw. So that was the biggest victory coming out of this competition was, wow, these guys are really competing the way we want them to compete. And it's only going to get better because it was day one. It was the first tournament of the year. So there was tons of rust, tons of nerves, a uh, lot of mistakes. Uh, I mean, silly, silly mistakes. And I told you guys last week we got a really young team. I wasn't surprised by that, to be honest with you. I kind of expected it. I didn't expect the specific ones I saw, but I definitely uh, expected we're going to see that because that's what we have is a lot of young guys that, are, that aren't afraid to go and try things and, and, and aren't afraid to rack up points no matter what the scenario. And so when you do that, sometimes um, you get points scored on you. But you know what? The more you wrestle like that, the more good things are going to happen and the better you're going to get. So we're excited for the big things, the things that matter most. Uh, the, that's, that's what we were really pumped about. I think it showed our culture. And I think I also saw our guys rallying around each other at the tournament, which was really neat to see and cornering each other and things like that. So that was, that was a big, big plus. One negative thing I did want, I told you I wouldn't touch negatives. I, it's not even negative, it's just a reality. I want to cover this because I've been getting a lot of text messages and a couple phone calls about it. We had, uh, we had medical forfeits from different guys. Guys were banged up. And you saw that all over the tournament. It wasn't just our program. It was many programs there. You know, five, six matches in a day, crazy situations, first term of the year. And you know what? There was, there was injuries. But some severe, some not so severe. And so my point is this, is I can't get into details for the kids' privacies, but I can tell you just because a guy wasn't able to finish the tournament doesn't mean he's out for the season. It doesn't mean that the world's come to an end. It means that we're going to reevaluate and do the best we can to get the guys back on the mat quickly. So I'll, I'll address a little bit of that more when, when I do the preview for the upcoming competition later in the week. But for right now, here we go. Let's stick to the highlights. 125, Louis Hayes. I've been talking about Louis Hayes since the summertime. He is incredible. We love him. He's, he's a redshirt freshman for us. Those who don't know, you're going to know his name. He's nationally ranked now. He's ranked 15th in the country by the newest rankings, and he'll keep climbing undoubtedly. Louie had an amazing tournament. He beat a national qualifier and nationally ranked opponent from Indiana in the quarterfinals. And again, it was one of those situations where he stayed the course, stayed the course, stays the course, comes back, takes him down with literally two seconds left to win. Um, then in the, in the semifinals, he beat Taylor Lamont from Utah Valley, who uh, Lamont is a total stud, world team member who actually, in his age group, who uh, actually I think the day before had pinned an All-American, returning All-American. So he's a top 10-ish guy and Louie goes out and beats him the same way. Came from behind, came way from behind. He was down 4 nothing. came all the way back late in the third and got the winning takedown again with, I think, four seconds left. And then in the finals, he beats uh, Gramacki from Clarion, who had just upset returning All-American Zeke Moisey, Moisey from West Virginia. So he was one of the big stories of the day. Just what an incredible tournament. But I'll tell you this, it didn't surprise Louie that he won. It didn't surprise us as coaches because we saw him this summer beat All-Americans. We saw him at the Southern Scuffle last year beat a returning All-American. He's... He's and then, oh by the way in high school was a state champ and, and double Fargo national champ so he's a total stud and he's put on a ton of muscle he's put a lot of work in he's very focused the biggest thing I'll say about what our whole team can learn from Louis is his complete his face never changes whether he's losing or winning it's complete focus the whole time he's stone faced he's the same guy no matter what the scenario and he never stops giving the same effort and I just think that's just such a gift 
Um, he, he may get taken down. He got ridden out in the finals the whole second period. Just popped right back up in the third. Figured it out. Got two takedowns. Wins the match. Oh, yeah. Or three takedowns, excuse me. So, you know, you got to be able to do that in those tough situations. So that was fantastic. Um, gosh. Uh, well, a lot of people were asking about Jack Mueller. I can't get into specifics, but I can tell you in the second, you know, second round of the tournament, he got he got injured and um, ha- had to pull out. And but But we don't think it's serious, and we think he's going to be back very soon. Um, 41 uh, or 49, we'll jump to that. Uh, uh, Sammy Crevis took third, and Crevis, you know, we think he had, he, he knows he has the ability to win the tournament. We, we think that he, he should have won the tournament, but uh, definitely was a lot of more positives and negatives with him. We saw a lot of good things, especially in the first couple rounds, first few rounds. And uh, the story at 49 as well is Sammy was his teammate, Jay Keating, who came, uh, who lost in the semis by a hair in overtime, then came back and uh, fought back his way to get to Sammy for third and fourth. So two teammates had to wrestle for third and fourth, and uh, Sammy won that match very close, three to two. And just so so awesome, uh, you know, having both those guys pushing each other every day. His dad was asking me about they wrestle in the room, and yeah, the answer is absolutely. They wrestle a ton in the room, and they're great for each other. And Keating has been one of those guys that we've bragged about a lot in terms of his work ethic and doing everything right and the little things and yeah. constantly lifting and doing extra. And so you saw that pay off. In the competition, I mean, he's just going to be—he's going to be, again. He's going to be a guy you're going to hear a lot from down the road. 165. Andrew Atkinson took fourth. 174 was the other big story of the day. Will Shaney dropped from 184 to 174. His body looks great. He's done a great job with his weight. It's funny we were talking last week about how you think you know about nutrition until you truly get into it. You think you know you're eating the right things until you truly start tracking it. And I think he was shocked. At, at, at how bad his diet was and how many things needed to change. And now he looks great and he's doing the right things and he's wrestling great. And he's a monster at 174. He's just so big. And we saw him beat uh, two really good guys. One guy in the finals uh, from Indiana, I believe, is a national qualifier and, and a Big Ten place. I think he took fifth place in the Big Ten last year. And very talented athletic kid. And Shaney just, again, stayed the course, got down early, came all the way back and beat him. Racked up, I think, three minutes of riding time, which if you don't will, you know, that's, a, that's an action item he's been working on a lot. Really proud of him doing my grind ride that we show in our room. And a lot of good things like that for, from Will. And so it was really exciting to see him flex and put that. They give you a huge gladiator helmet after you win it to see him put that helmet on and celebrate with his teammates and all his buddies hugging him was really neat at 184 uh, chance mcclure uh beat the four seed end up making the quarterfinals or semis i don't even know what round it was but then he he um we, we decided to pull him because of a something that was going on in his body and so that was a coach's decision there but he'll be back um uh 197 jalo uh had had a great day really i mean he didn't he didn't have the exact day he wanted, but he went four and two at six matches. And and the thing about Jay, the reason I want to bring him up specifically was again buy-in. We've been teaching him a specific hand fight system that he was using the whole tournament. He was shooting like crazy. You know, he, here's a guy that almost every match he shot himself out. We'd rather that happen. We we don't want guys holding and clinging and trying to win close, and that's not what he was doing. Um, so overall. Um, yeah, I mean, well, actually, Tyler Love also made the quarters, ended up losing close in the quarters, and we had to pull him as well, but he'll be back this weekend. So that's our that that's the, the wrap of sort of the highlights. I can't go through every single guy because we don't have the time, but I can tell you that, again, I think you're going to be excited, win or lose, whatever the final outcome is about the way our guys are competing, and I hope you'll trust me or come with me in the, in the trust process of believing what we're going to be because it, it's, it's, it is a process and it, we're excited about the future and what we can, what we think, God willing, people do stay healthy and, and things fall into place, what we're going to have, uh, not just this coming March, but then moving forward throughout the next few years. So pretty exciting. Um, definitely got a lot of work to do. Though. The reality is this. Tons and tons and tons of technical work needs to be done. It's only November. As much time as we spend in there, there's still a long way to go, and so that's what we're going to be back doing. Thanks so much for listening, and go Hoos.